I recently moved into my new studio space and I documented the whole build, including making my acoustic panels, the lighting setup and various other different things like that uh, through a series of seven videos during Vlogmas as a sort of video diary, if you will. Uh, now, I've had quite a few questions about different aspects of the studio since then. Uh, so what I thought I'd do was just stitch all of those days together into one video so that you can go and see the whole process from start to finish uh, in this video. I'll leave uh, timestamps so that you can jump forward through the different days if you want to miss the uh, beginning parts and just see what it looks like at the end. Uh, and I'll also be back at the very end to give a quick wrap up. But without further ado, let's jump straight on into day one. Hello and welcome to, effectively, the first video from my new studio. I know, exciting, right? <laughs> uh, so this is, um, we, we call it the cottage. It's a little building at the bottom of our garden uh, and it consists of this room, <laughs> and through there is a bathroom uh, and then just out of this window is our little vegetable patch and herb garden uh, and then we've got another couple of windows at the front there as well uh, and so it's just a little self-contained uh, building and up until recently was uh, pretty much used as a storeroom to be honest so I've cleared it all out and now it is going to become my uh, dedicated studio space so I've got a bit of work to do I'm already underway apart from clearing it out Look at that, I've got a tub of, uh, a tub of paint, so I'm going to be painting that back wall there uh, and also the side walls with this colour which is a grey and uh, yeah, as per obviously Doc's instructions, uh, I've got a couple of Nanolite Pavo tubes that are going to go on either side so that then whatever colour I shine on them, uh, the, uh, the, the wall will just basically absorb that and appear as that colour. Uh, thanks also to Joel Foner, by the way, for uh, popping a link into the LGL group uh, with the, uh, the place where you can go and basically input the colour that you want and it'll tell you the colour code to use for any paint manufacturer or most of the paint manufacturers. So uh, via that I managed to get the right colour paint, hopefully we'll find out. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave a link actually to that in the description for this video as well. Uh, so what is the plan exactly? Well. Uh, I just turn around this way. So that is basically the front wall and uh, that's where sort of the main garden is. So that is where likely the children will be playing <laughs> and causing the most noise. So my desk is going to be uh, positioned actually right in front of this, uh, this window here. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, currently my, uh, my uh, monitor, so I've got a 43 inch monitor, it's on a TV stand so I can wheel it around but everything is basically mounted to that. So. Uh, my teleprompter, my uh, camera, overhead camera, things like that are all just mounted to that so it can be wheeled around. So uh, I'm also going to change my configuration a little bit with this, uh, this space as opposed to the, uh, the basement where I usually am. Uh, so this one I'm going to actually have a standing desk. Um, and so I'm going to obviously just raise the height of the, uh, of the monitor and everything on the stand. But what that means is that the, uh, the monitor will pretty much be up to here anyway. So it's going to pretty much cover this window. So what I'm going to do is actually just completely cover that with uh, sound insulation, actually within the, uh, in the sort of uh, recess where the window is. Uh, so that will effectively be totally blocked off. We've got this window here. I do want to keep that so that I've got some natural light. So when I'm sitting at my desk, uh, just along here, then I can look out and see into the window. I can open the window as well if I want. Uh, but when I'm recording, I definitely will want to be locking that off. So I'm going to be making some uh, acoustic panels to hang on the wall. So what I'm actually going to do with here is I'm going to have a rail that runs along the top uh, and then I'll make one big acoustic panel for here, which will be here when the window is open, but then I can just uh, slide it to cover the window when I want to uh, record and block out any noise or anything from the outside. Uh, also, it blocks out the light as well. Um, it's pretty good actually here because there's a nice uh, grass roof <laughs> out of the front, so I get shade from that side. Uh, I've got some nice big uh, mango trees, banana plants outside here. So uh, the sun usually traps around there, but it doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight. Uh, and then there's some big trees that are coming over the top of it as well. So um, it's pretty shady really, but uh, I just want to be consistent with lighting. So just being able to block off all the light. It's one thing I do like about my little current basement studio is it's always consistent. Everything is always the same. Uh, so uh, by having this window will be blocked uh, and then this one having the, uh, the acoustic panel, which will also obviously block the light, slide over, will, uh, will help with that as well. Uh, there is another window there, which is, uh, this is just by the way, a place where you walk in and out, so that goes to the outside. Uh, so I'm going to put a curtain across this little, uh, not really a 
corridor, is it? But this little entryway. So I'll put a curtain across here, which will do two things, help with the sound coming in potentially from that window, uh, but then also it will just block the, uh, block the light out as well. In terms of the, uh, the setup, so yeah, the camera angle will basically be here. It won't be quite such a, a wide shot as this, uh, so it will be uh, a lot tighter in on that back wall area. Uh, so I'm just thinking about exactly what to do in the uh, in the space. That cable there hanging down, by the way, that is for an aircon unit. So uh, I have an aircon on the wall there. Uh, normally, what they would do when they're installing the aircon is they would put the compressor on the wall outside or maybe on the floor outside. But obviously, they can be a little bit noisy. So uh, what I'll probably do is route the uh, uh, the copper pipe from the aircon unit uh, going around at the back and then we've actually got a separate wall sort of at the back of this as well so I'll, I'll mount it onto there so it won't be attached physically to the building so it's not going to have any vibration from that way uh, and then also there'll effectively be sort of actually two walls between me and it as well so that should hopefully help to keep the uh, keep the noise down uh, I'll, uh, I'll be doing as I say some sound treatment with the acoustic panel so as well as <coughs> Excuse me. As well as having a, an acoustic panel covering this uh, window here and the sliding one covering that, I'll also be having them on the walls here and here and on the back and then also on the side and then a couple are just above me as well. The acoustic panels I'm actually making myself and they, these will be uh, basically timber framed, wood framed and then covered with material and inside is, uh, I've actually ordered some acoustic uh, insulation uh, that's specifically for this job and that comes in sheets which are two foot by four foot so 60 centimeters by 1.2 meters and uh, two inches uh, five centimeters thick so I'll be making basically acoustic panels that are the same size as that so they just fit right in and uh, yeah those will be sort of dotted around uh, and I'll probably do something in the corners as well just to help with the, uh, the acoustics in the, uh, the corners of the room. And then, uh, yeah, I'll have, uh, because of the amount I've ordered, <laughs> come in boxes of six sheets, basically. So I've ordered 12. So there'll be two for this window, two to cover that window, uh, and then some sort of single panels around. Uh, and then I'll have two as well that are just hang from the, uh, the ceiling, so one above me and one a little bit further back. So as I say, the camera angle will be around about here, uh, although a lot tighter in on that background. So what I'll do is I'll, do something interesting with the back wall. <laughs> I haven't fin figured out exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, probably some sort of shelving, something like that, and uh, we'll, we'll have, a, have a little think about that a little bit more. The desk that I'm going to use, as I say, I'm going to go with a standing desk, although at the moment I'm probably just going to use my original desk, just in the interest of time, and uh, just jack it up a bit. <laughs> do a bit of a MacGyver job on it. Uh, however, what I do want to do ultimately is build a new desk that will be uh, bigger. So the desk that I've got at the moment is, what, 90 centimetres, so three foot by 1.5, so three foot by five foot. Uh, I'd like a little bit of a bigger desk than that, to be honest. Uh, I might go with a four by six or four by seven or something like that. Um, <laughs> and then I'll have that along there and then also some sort of side bench down this side uh, so that when I'm doing sort of electronics or anything like that, then I've got somewhere to, uh, to do that. Uh, in terms of the cameras, as well as my uh, regular camera, which will be here, uh, and I've got my overhead camera, which I use in any case, uh, I'll probably add a second angle in from here, that's sort of looking back at the, uh, sort of slightly from behind at the screen. Uh, I quite like when you, uh, uh, when you see people doing that on, uh, on their YouTube channel, where you can actually see what they're doing, as opposed to just looking either at the screen or directly at them. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do that. Uh, and then potentially, maybe maybe at a later date, I might add a top-down camera that is specifically uh, for the uh, for the workbench as well, and another camera angle for that. But uh, for the time being, I don't want to go too Keith Pelzer. <laughs> the uh, two or three is going to be good for the moment, uh, but who knows? <laughs> who knows where the gear acquisition syndrome will take me? Well, here we are on day two, and the acoustics in the studio are still pretty terrible, uh, but we've got some grey walls, or actually we've got some colourful walls, because as you can see, those are three grey walls, now that I've uh, got the lights shining on them, that's the uh, Nanolite Pavo Tube 6Cs, uh, I'll obviously be doing a review on those in due course on the, uh, the channel, uh, but you can see how basically the wall sort of takes on the colour of those lights, so uh, I don't know about you, but it's almost starting to look a little bit studio-like, isn't it? <laughs> so what else have I done? I've uh, beefed up the, uh, the security on the windows a little bit, 
uh, and I've also got myself my, uh, my rail, which is going to go up here, and I've got the running gear for that, so that I can basically create a sliding uh, acoustic panel, which will cover that window. This window will be completely blocked with an acoustic panel as well. Uh, and then this one, I'm just going to have a curtain that goes across there to block that out. So still plenty to do, uh, but for the time being, I'm quite happy with progress. So uh, the acoustic panels that I'm going to use to make the walls with, or the acoustic panels that I'm going to put on the walls, <laughs> uh, the material for it is all coming in the next day or so. So uh, I shall be cracking on with that as soon as it arrives. Well, there's been a bit of progress since the, uh, since the last video, uh, namely the, uh, the rail is up there, that is for the, uh, the sliding acoustic panel that's basically just going to slide across uh, and uh, block out the noisy vegetable patch <laughs> when I'm recording uh, and also keep out the light as well. Uh, the material has arrived, the actual uh, acoustic foam, uh, so that is basically in uh, here, so we've got these sheets which are uh, basically two foot by four foot or 60 centimeters by 1.2 meters uh, and then it is five centimeters two inches thick uh, it's actually almost exactly the same color as the walls isn't it uh, but it will be uh, uh, put in a frame so I've got the uh, the timber there for the frame and then I'll be heading to the uh, uh, fabric shop material shop today to uh, get the uh, the covering for those and so then apart from the uh, the sliding wall here or the sliding panel there'll also be another two so one sort of here <laughs> and one in the corner here, one on this wall and there'll be a bit of a gap at the back because I'm going to have some shelves up there uh, and then there'll be one in this corner followed by uh, basically a row of three along that wall. I've only got uh, sort of two of them on there at the moment. Now I've also uh, been having a little think about the layout in terms of where things are so I've got stuff marked up on the floor. Uh, my desk is going to be actually central in the uh, in sort of side to side direction um, and so that is kind of like the center line. So when I'm actually at my desk, I will be uh, sort of centered in the, in the room basically. Otherwise that would drive me crazy <laughs> if the room wasn't, uh, the camera wasn't centered in the room. Uh, but it works out quite well in any case, because if we look back here, uh, then I'll have a, a, a double acoustic panel again that will be blocking out that window. There will be a curtain that goes across this sort of entryway. So it blocks out the sound and the light from, uh, from that window. And uh, so yeah, that is the sort of the space where the desk is going to be. It will be stood off from the desk, from the wall at the back, because I actually have my uh, camera and monitor all mounted to a rolling TV stand. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that when I actually get it in. It'll be easier to, uh, to show then. Uh, I'm going to have some sort of cupboard unit, uh, actually about the same size as that box, <laughs> uh, down on the, uh, the side there. And then at some point I will also add in a second desk here uh, for like, I don't know, electronics work, stuff like that, the stuff that I don't want to dirty my main desk with. And uh, that is about it. So today I'll be heading to, as I say, get the, uh, the fabric, the material that's going to cover the uh, uh, acoustic panels, uh, and then I'll get those made and share that with you as well. I'm still debating, to be honest, whether to keep those as one big sheet, so I've got big long panels, or whether to actually split them into squares and do something a little bit more decorative with them. Uh, incidentally, the panels also will be stood off from the wall, so they're not completely flat against the wall, they'll be stood off by two inches. So what I'm thinking of doing is having some uh, sort of low discrete lighting behind them uh, that will just sort of come washing out from the side onto the, onto the wall. So still got that one in the back of my mind as well. Haven't quite figured out how to mount them to the wall yet, uh, I've got uh, certainly lots of different options. I did also wonder about hanging them from the ceiling. So they are suspended, but that might be asking for trouble. <laughs> I can see me knocking them off or pulling them down. So I'll have to give that a little bit more thought, but I'll keep you posted. Hello and welcome to another update. And there was quite a lot of progress made yesterday. And although I had a video that went out last night, my time, I do actually record these videos in the morning talking about the progress from the day before. So <laughs> there's usually a day's worth of progress being made by the time I actually post it. Uh, in any case, so yesterday, what I was doing was making the, uh, the frames for the acoustic panels. So you may recall that the uh, acoustic panels are two inches thick and then basically four foot by two foot. So I've uh, got some timber, whoopsie daisy, some of it's on the floor now, that I've been using, which is this sort of cross section. Uh, and this is basically just uh, slightly wider than two inches. So it's about two and a half, uh, three inches wide. Uh, and then that allows me to put a batten along the back to hold the, uh, the panels in place. So that looks something like this. This is one of them. Not quite finished actually, 
but this is just a big frame that's basically the same size as the uh, the panels. Uh, what I've got to do on this is just actually finish off the corners so uh, you can see that the, uh, the the bevel sort of stops where the other one joins over it. I've just gone with simple joints. I didn't do mitre joints or any stuff like that. It is going to be covered by the uh, the material that covers it in any case. Uh, and yes, letting go of my perfectionism. So I'm just literally trimming off the edge once I've uh, once I've built them. Uh, and so the final panel, uh, or not the final one, but actually the uh, at least the the structure of it. Uh, then looks something like this. So you can see that this one has had the ends sort of slightly more uh, finished uh, and it basically, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> it basically just holds the, uh, the, the panel in place like that uh, and then across the back we've got a uh, uh, bracing strap here uh, and so that is basically what they are like. So the next step then is to um, actually cover them. So I did go to the fabric shop yesterday don't want that to fall over. <laughs> I went to the fabric shop yesterday and actually got two different sets of fabric. So one is going to be uh, just black. So this is a uh, sort of, it's got a slight stretch to it so that it's going to pull nice and tight over the top, but over, ever so slightly, not a great deal. Uh, and then the other one is more of a grey colour. So uh, the panels are basically just going to alternate with the different colours around different colours grey or black, <laughs> alternate grey or black around the wall. Uh, I did actually take out all the panels and just sort of put them around the wall where they're going to go. Uh, and if you watch yesterday's video, you can probably see already, just with them literally leaned up against the wall like this, that there is a big difference in the acoustics already. So once I've got them all up, not just a few of them, uh, and got everything into the room, I'm sure that the acoustics are going to be, uh, going to be a lot better. So I've currently made, uh, well, one finished frame, I've got three others that are uh, kind of roughly finished. I've got to finish off the corners, obviously. Uh, and then I've got to uh, make the other four regular size frames. And then there's going to be two double ones, one for the, the sliding panel that I had going over the window, which is what that rail is there. And another one for sort of behind where my monitor is going to be, uh, which will cover another uh, window. But I've got all the pieces uh, cut and drilled, uh, ready to just assemble, basically. So. Uh, that will be a pretty uh, quick job uh, and then I've got the, the old staple gun and compressor so that I can uh, get the <laughs> material covering, the fabric covering on them pretty quick as well. I was saying in my last video about I wasn't quite sure, sorry one was just falling on my foot, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to uh, mount them to the wall. In the end I decided to uh, keep it simple. Uh, I'm basically going to add a uh, a wire to the back with a couple of eyelets uh, and then eff effectively hang them like pictures. So I'll have some hooks that uh, stick off from the wall, I'll just be able to hang them there and then at the, the bottom they'll have a couple of little feet because they do need to stand off the wall so uh, they're two inches thick for the foam, uh, the uh, acoustic insulation rather, uh, and then it will be another two inches off the wall. So I'll basically just hang it the right distance off the wall and then have two little sort of feet at the bottom to keep the bottom off the wall and stop it from, uh, from moving as well. Hello and welcome to another instalment from the studio build and quite a lot of progress yesterday actually, not quite as far along the line as I was intending but then I do have other things to do with work and so on so I couldn't quite devote enough time to it yesterday but nevertheless still as I say quite a lot of progress. All of the acoustic panels are now effectively uh, hung so they are positioned. All I've got to do is uh, take them down, the ones that aren't covered and, uh, and add the covering to them. So uh, I've only done one of those so far, which is uh, obviously that one over there. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So here's the first panel. It's uh, all been covered. Uh, technically, it's not quite finished, but I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, but I'm quite pleased with the uh, the look of it, actually. It's uh, got a, the fabrics stretched nicely over it. The beveled edges of the, uh, the wood uh, were intended to just give it a little bit of an extra feature on the edge, and I think that that works quite well. Uh, the panel is, the, the insulation is two centimeters thick two inches thick, beg your pardon, <laughs> uh, and the back of that is also two inches off the wall, so that means that there is a sort of gap behind that. I haven't put the lights in yet, but I will be putting some sort of lighting behind that so that it just sort of washes out from the wall and helps it to sort of stand off. You can see that the colour of grey of this material is actually very similar to the colour of grey of the wall, so it will take on the light in a similar fashion to the, uh, to the paint. Uh, they're not all going to be this colour though, I have got some that are going to be uh, black, so this is the material for that. So it's going to be basically grey, black, grey, black all the way around the room. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so yeah, now I'll just show you how I actually mounted them in the end. Uh, so if I take it off the wall, basically up at the top, 
I mentioned in the last video that I was thinking of hanging them like a picture. Uh, in the end, I decided to uh, have a uh, two hooks at the top uh, and then basically uh, two little screws here. The hooks are actually sideways on, so it sits on top of the hook, uh, but then the little screws that I've got in the top here just stop it from falling, uh, falling forward. Uh, and then at the bottom, on the back, there is two little blocks that basically space it so that it stands off from the wall. Now when I said it wasn't quite finished, uh, this is why. <laughs> Still lots of loose material there that I haven't trimmed off. Uh, I will put a backing in here as well. Uh, technically I should have put the backing in first and then wrap this neatly over the top of it. Uh, but the way that I'll put the backing in, you won't see it anyway. Uh, if I was going to mass produce these, then definitely I'd make a few adjustments to my uh, my workflow. But basically, I'm really, uh, really happy with the way that these have come out. And uh, certainly, the next sort of step of adding all the material to the others will be pretty quick. Uh, it doesn't take long to sort of whiz around it with the, uh, the air stapler. Uh, and then we'll have all the others on the wall. So there is one other thing that I did uh, yesterday as well, which is hang the, uh, the sliding panel. So I'll show you that one now. So basically my desk will be actually around about here, uh, but there's a window here that I wanted to be able to block off when I'm uh, recording, uh, but then I could also open it to get some natural light and fresh air and, uh, and so on in when, uh, when I'm not. And so that was the purpose of having this sliding panel. Uh, and so this basically just slides over to reveal the, uh, <laughs> the darkness of the early morning behind the window there. Um, but that means that this will just slide completely across and completely block it out so that it keeps out, uh, obviously, as I say, the sound and the, uh, uh, the light. <laughs> uh, now, it isn't quite at the same height of the other ones. Uh, that was intentional to a point because there will be an air conditioning unit going up here, the internal part. Uh, so I needed to leave uh, space for that. Uh, and in any case, when this is slid across, uh, you won't really notice it in the shot. So uh, you may well just see see the edge of the rail there, but I'll figure out a way to actually cover this uh, with like a, a pelmet or something like that, uh, so that it is covered and uh, doesn't look quite so unsightly. Believe it or not, I couldn't actually find the right bolts. So for the moment, I've just uh, used screws into a couple of uh, blocks of wood to actually mount the rail, <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll be getting the right bolts if you can bet your money on that <laughs> to make it look all nice and neat. But for the time being, uh, it, uh, it's certainly uh, certainly working. I've still got to make the panel that's going to go on the wall in front of me. Uh, I've made the panel. I've just got to mount it rather. Uh, but um, yeah, that will block out the window that is directly in front of me. And then we'll be pretty much nearly ready to move in. There is, however, another job that needs to be done, and that is to uh, mount my lights to the wall. I don't like free... Uh, floor standing lighting stands and things like that with trailing cables. So I will be mounting them to the wall just like they have been in my current basement studio. Um, and so all I'm doing with that is I've just got some regular brackets, pretty pretty sturdy. I don't know if me knocking it shows you how sturdy they are. <laughs> They're quite strong though. Uh, and then these are just, like I say, just wall shelf brackets. Uh, but what I did is I enlarged that, uh, that uh, hole there uh, and then basically just got a, uh, a bolt that fits through. Uh, and then I've got one of these uh, lighting spigots if I can get the bolt through. <laughs> these, uh, you can get these, I'll leave a link to them in, uh, in the description. Uh, but these are just the little uh, lighting spigots that you would uh, attach light fittings to. Uh, and so then this mounts onto the, uh, the bracket like that. Uh, and this is just then mounted to the wall and I've then got a mounting point for my, uh, for my lights without needing to have any, uh, as I say, any stands or anything like that. Uh, and it's quite a nice, uh, neat, elegant solution when it's mounted to the wall. <laughs> and then I'll just have the, uh, obviously the cable uh, trailing down. Uh, if I was really building a full on studio, uh, as in actually building it from the ground up, uh, I would definitely route cables and things through the walls. But hey ho, we'll have to do with what we've got. And uh, certainly for the moment, I'm really pleased with it. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna be uh, uh, quite a big difference to my other space, which you obviously only see the green screen version of it with uh, obviously the green background and my, my various fake backgrounds. Uh, but this is certainly a step up from where I was because I was tucked away right at the back of the basement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is certainly a nicer space to work in. So that's all for this update, but I'm hoping by the next update, all of these will be fully covered and maybe there might even be a desk in. We'll have to see. Well, here we are for another update and there's been quite a lot of progress yesterday. I've got all of the uh, acoustic panels now completely finished, so they've all been covered. Uh, and as you can see, hung on the wall on this side. Uh, they're also hung on the wall on this side. I've got the uh, sliding one finished uh, and check this out. I've even got the one behind the window and above the desk 
and I've even bought the desk in and got the lights up on the wall as well. So uh, really chuffed actually to be in. I've still got quite a lot of work to do on cable management. So if I just uh, come down here, <laughs> you can see my little Mac Mini's there on its little shelf uh, and uh, no cable management whatsoever. Uh, and worse still, if I come around this side, uh, you can see all behind here is just basically a mess of wires. Uh, incidentally, that is the uh, TV stand that I've referred to in a couple of other videos that my monitor is mounted on. So it's just basically a big wheeled stand, uh, perhaps easy if I come around this side, in fact. Uh, and you can see down here that uh, there you go, it's just a TV stand, but with this uh, 43 inch Philips monitor. Uh, I've got my camera that I have sort of mounted to the top of that as well. So there was actually a fitting on here that I was able to attach a ball head to, uh, and the camera is mounted to that. Uh, this is actually the uh, Desview T3 uh, uh, teleprompter with the Lilliput A7 monitor. Uh, I have actually just made a little bit of a hood for it because uh, I found that that helped to keep off a little bit of the glare. Not that it was a major issue, but it just helped to uh, uh, keep it nice and nice and clean. And uh, yeah, this is then just a another little addition, a little MacGyver addition, where I've just basically added uh, a little arm onto the back, and that is my. Uh, it's actually an iPhone 5S, uh, and that is for my uh, my top-down shot. Uh, and so it's all fixed to that. I've also got the Elgato Wave. Uh, low profile arm. Uh, I was previously using something a little bit like this which I'd sort of uh, jerry-rigged <laughs> to come off the uh, off a, uh, some shelves to the side but I've recently got the Elgato Wave uh, and I may actually uh, just mount that to the uh, the same TV stand as well. Uh, a collection of uh, coffee cups there because uh, I'm not joking when I say this channel is fueled on coffee <laughs> uh, so buy me a coffee.com slash take one tech <laughs> but um, yeah that is uh, that is where we're up to and I'm pretty uh, pretty pleased with it to be honest I've still got to put up the uh, whoopsie daisy wrong direction I've got to put up the uh, the curtain that goes across here so that's the last sort of uh, not really major construction is it but uh, the last sort of main thing that I've got to do in the room uh, is uh, in terms of drilling holes is to put up this uh, thick curtain here which will help to just block out the sound and the light from the window that's behind that curtain uh, and then this is the uh, this window here is being completely blocked by this uh, acoustic panel uh, and then behind this sliding panel I've then got a window which can still be opened uh, but I can just uh, basically block it off when I'm uh, when I'm recording so uh, that is where we're up to and uh, of course I still do need to figure out exactly what to do on this back wall I do kind of know what I'm going to do but I've just got to go out and get the various uh, things that I need for it um, I also need to get a nice big rug for the floor just to help with the acoustics I've also got some other uh, sort of acoustic insulation that I'm uh, probably going to be positioning on the roof at some point the other thing that I do need to think about though is um, if you have a look at the camera angle on my uh, my camera you can see that it's sort of pointing down and that's because uh, well first of all the monitor is quite large so it's a 43 inch monitor uh, and the camera is obviously sitting up above it um, but what that means is the camera angle is sort of like this when I'm sitting down so it would be looking down at me uh, and hence looking sort of down at the floor now you probably didn't notice that in previous videos uh, where I was using the green screen because obviously the background was uh, the correct uh, angle uh, and you maybe just didn't even notice that it was pointing slightly down at this angle uh, and uh, rather than completely flat at that angle so I need to figure out what to do about that because I don't want to obviously have uh, my camera pointing down at the ground uh, I was thinking of uh, anyway using a standing desk because this is uh, this will be modified at some point but I thought I'd give it out give it a go before I actually go and build one because I might just get a bit tired <laughs> so we'll have to see how uh, how that goes uh, but definitely need to do something about the uh, the camera positioning there uh, whatever that may be so I'll give a little bit more thought to that and uh, I'll keep you posted <laughs> Well, hello, I thought I would just do a, another quick update from the studio because uh, I haven't really changed much cosmetically as such, but I have uh, resolved some of the issues that I was talking about in my last uh, update. So, uh, namely, what I've done is uh, changed my desk setup slightly. So if I come over here, uh, I've got a little chair as well. I've got to relax from time to time, haven't we? Uh, <laughs> so if it's quiet I'm either I'm either having a nap or recording <laughs> but uh, this is the way that I've got things set up at the moment so uh, 
If you watched the previous video, I was saying I wasn't sure what to do about the desk, whether to go with a standing desk or a sitting desk. Uh, and the issue that I had was that the camera was basically kind of up above the, the monitor and pointing down at me. Uh, and so that didn't really give a good uh, shot for the background. I've sort of compromised actually. I've raised the, uh, the desk up to more like the height of a kitchen counter and then I've got a stool so when I uh, want to sit I can sit and work. Uh, but then for my videos I will be doing those all standing up so that means that the camera now is at basically at eye level so it's going to make the, uh, the shot a lot better framed and uh, yeah it's basically going to frame me in the back. Uh, probably I wonder if I can change this on the fly. There we go. I did have to uh, pause, but I, uh, I got there in the end. Uh, so that's basically what the uh, the shot is going to be. And so it's sort of framing those panels in the background. Lighting will be a bit different. I'm just filming this still on my iPad. Uh, so I do need to uh, do a few more things with the lighting. Uh, I have uh, got those Nunlight Pavo tubes uh, at the moment. I've sort of positioned them behind me. So it does just sort of give a wash of color uh, behind me on the uh, the wall. And then I've got those linked to the uh, Nunlink app on the phone so I can change the uh, color and everything of them from the uh, the mobile. Uh, I am, as I mentioned in another video, going to put some backlighting actually behind these uh, panels. So these are the acoustic panels that I made uh, and I'm going to have some backlighting behind those, just some RGB lighting that I can change the color of that as well uh, and so it will just give a nice sort of wash of color because actually on my main camera uh, the, uh, the background is a lot sort of darker other than this. So it will just help them to uh, stand out for uh, a little bit. I have done a bit of work on my uh, cable management which was another thing that I was talking about last time so they're uh, apart from that back corner having just said that you'll have to excuse that uh, you'll also notice I've got a fan which is not ideal really sort of blowing directly uh, across the uh, front of the microphone uh, but the aircon is not yet in so it is getting a little bit hot in here at times um, and so yeah we've still got a bit of a tangle of wires over there but we don't have all of that mess on the floor uh, and underneath the desk is where my, my Mac Mini is. Uh, I've got my, obviously my headphones just dangling down, Mac Mini there and all the cables are rooted. Uh, obviously my foot pedals on the, the floor there. And then round the back of the monitor is looking a little bit tidier. Just thinking about the easiest way to show you this. <laughs> so uh, here we go. I've got all of the, uh, the switches related to things that are mounted to the monitor on the back. I've got all of my uh, cables that are coming out because this has basically got an integrated USB uh, hub in there as well. Uh, so that's all nice and tidy now. Uh, and the camera and the teleprompter on the top. I've got my little uh, top-down camera just using uh, Camo. Uh, by Reincubate is the app that I use for that uh, and so that is just using an old iPhone 5S uh, or SX was it I can't remember uh, and then I've still got one of my old lights which is uh, basically uh, what is it called now I forget the name of it I'll leave a link in the description I shouldn't really forget the name of it should I <laughs> Ulanzi VL49 RGB there we go just have to put a bit of effort into it uh, so I've got that there and I just made a little hood for that actually just so that it doesn't actually shine uh, on basically the top of my head <laughs> and directs the light down if I do need any extra light on the uh, the desktop when I'm sharing my uh, showing my desk uh, and then I've also repurposed an old Logitech webcam to give me a little sort of over the shoulder shot to look back at the uh, the screen and speaking of screens you can probably see over there I have actually got a green screen <laughs> this is uh, a lot smaller than the green screen I had before which was basically uh, three meters by two meters something like that so it was completely covered the wall behind me this is a much smaller version but actually built in the same way with uh, PVC pipe and then just using the uh, PVC pipe wall clips to just basically clip over and hold the material in place and it gives you actually a really nice uh, sturdy green screen uh, and then on this side it's nice and tight uh, so that uh, yeah it just gives you a much better green screen effect obviously I've got light shining through it you don't normally see the poles in the middle uh, and these bits on the side are actually to fold out uh, and then my little lights will fit on the side of there to shine light onto the uh, the green screen itself because as we all know to get good quality green screen results you need to make sure your green screen is properly lit uh, and where does this go well look at that I've got two strings up above so I can always just basically hang this <laughs> from here <laughs> and so then I do have the green screen directly behind me because 
Although for my channel videos, I'm not going to be uh, green screening anymore. I do still have some use cases where I do need to uh, use the green screen. So uh, I did still want to have that ability. It could be a little bit wider. It means I've got to sort of crop in the shot. What I might do is actually fit a, uh, a rolling uh, green screen, which basically just fits sort of down between here uh, and the same on the other side. Uh, and then that can just basically uh, roll down with a touch of a button or the wind of a handle or whatever it happens to be <laughs> so that would still allow me to have a sort of full uh, green backdrop for when i need to do those sorts of things it just saves fiddling around with cropping out edges and stuff like that and then if you only have a partial uh, covered area with green screen and you sort of put your hand out of it it almost looks like your hands just disappearing into nothingness so uh, yes i'll be working on that and i'll keep you updated what to do next well pretty much with air <laughs> the only thing that i've really got to do is fit the uh, the lights in the background put a bit of furniture and decoration and things like that uh, i am still going to put some sort of curtain across here uh, i do actually have some of this material left over that i used for these uh, uh, acoustic panels so i may end up just using some of that uh, and making the curtain that's going to go across there just to sort of block out the uh, entryway there and uh, help with the sound and light issue there uh, not that there's that much of an issue to be honest it's pretty peaceful and I'm really pleased I've said it before I'm really pleased with how the acoustic panels came out though <laughs> they have just made it a uh, really sort of nice uh, place to work in so that's where we are up to with the studio there is still lots more to do I've got uh, camera upgrades lighting upgrades and various other different things to add in uh, one thing since uh, then in fact that I have added though is you'll notice that I have got that backlighting that I talked about on the uh, acoustic panels so that is just uh, LED strips and they are just sort of mounted behind the acoustic panels to give that sort of extra little bit of glow to the back wall <laughs> so uh, yeah I hope you did find that interesting and useful and if you did then uh, don't forget to go and like and subscribe and uh, follow me in all of the usual places uh, but for now that's all for this video but don't go anywhere because YouTube is going to pick out some great videos just for you over on the right hand side so until the next video uh, have a wonderful few minutes <laughs>